Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we rise up on our feet and give Jesus a shout of celebration? No, come on, come on, lift up your voices and give Jesus. Okay, that shout that shout is good for is good for a potential boyfriend or girlfriend. Now give Jesus, give Jesus a high clap offering of praise. Oh, come on! Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Are you blessed to be here today? Let's appreciate all the serving teams that are working behind the scenes, the media team, the worship team, far and wide. Can we also welcome all the fathers, mothers who are joining us in this service, together with Deacon Ombogo as well. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Amen. Um, we have a wonderful opportunity to pray for the Hinda team that is heading to Trukana. Um, we'll be doing that shortly. Um, I just want us to get into the word, and then after the word, we'll be commissioning them so that everyone else who has not yet got into the sanctuary will have a chance uh, to do so. Can we lift up our hands for a minute and just talk to the Lord? As we receive his word today, Father, I have come into your sanctuary. I'm ready to receive from your word today. Just talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. So be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I'm in I am the Lord. I am in control. I am the Lord. Oh, 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 that I am God, I'm in control, I am the Lord. It's a word that God is giving someone today. Be still. <laughs> Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I Just lift up your hands, close your eyes, let's focus on Jesus. Parada satalikata Hallelujah 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 
We give you praise, oh God. such a such a privilege and an honor not to be seen it is a joy to be hidden so that you may be seen in the communication of your word we choose to be like John the Baptist who decreases so that you may increase and Lord from the instruments of our voice the sound that is coming from this altar today we ask that you release the grace to teach wisdom understanding and revelation Holy Spirit, search the deep things of God and reveal them to us even now. I take authority over this atmosphere. Every spirit that is not of God, we silence you right now. Mind control spirits, maneuvering spirits that contend against God's word, we silence you right now in the name of Jesus. We declare that this is an atmosphere, an open heaven for the Holy Spirit to minister to God's people. Thank you, Father, for the mighty things you will do. Receive all the glory, receive all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give a hand clap to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Before you have your seat, um, you know, this is a family church and we take time to celebrate our loved ones. Uh, could you please help me appreciate my mom? It's her birthday today. Um, happy birthday. Oh, there she is. Happy birthday. Uh, just wave your hand. That is Mama Joy. Happy birthday. Come on, let's appreciate her. Happy birthday to you. After the service, you can celebrate her. Amen. Please be seated in Jesus' mighty name. Now, it's a quick work by the Spirit. Um, if we're meeting for the first time, my name is Maxine Jogona, and it's such an honor for us to connect with you, to fellowship with you. You're most welcome to share fellowship with us. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, last Sunday, we took time to kick off our sermon series, which is titled Advance. Um, let me read Joshua 6, verse 7. Joshua 6, 7. Because that is where we really get the inspiration of our series. Not just for the month of June, but prophetically for the half of the year that is coming up. Joshua chapter 6, verse 7. Um, do we have it on the monitors? And he said to the people, can we take it from um, NIV, please? NIV. This is what the Bible says from NIV. Help us, oh God. And he ordered the army advance, march around the city with an armed guard going ahead of the ark of the Lord. He ordered the army advance. Somebody say advance. Tell your neighbor, advance. So that is what we are trusting God for in this new month and also in the half of the year. And we started last Sunday uh, with a clear indication that the, the first thing that God will help us to advance, maybe I can just take two, two minutes to uh, summarize the intention for this month. As we were praying for the half of the year, because the month of June is a gate to the half of the year, the same way that November and December are gateways to the new season. Um, when you look at the chronos of time, the chronological order of time is that some months are very prophetic, they are very specific, and that's why some of us have faced a lot of a lot of um, a lot of turbulence and pain in the month of May and early June because the enemy knows that God is getting you ready to advance into the half of the year. So the month of June, the month of November, the month of December are critical months that we usher ourselves to hear what God is releasing upon us even as we get into the next season. So while we were in prayer, God was so specific to give us three realities of the places where we need to advance. Because advances is not just an emotional game. It's not just shouting, I'm advancing. When someone comes to you and tells you, what are you really advancing to? 
then there must be a requisite understanding of where we are headed. So three areas of advancement. Number one, um, we see this in the similitude of the life of Joshua, who is our character for this month. Number one is that we are advancing to take possession of physical land. So we took time last week to talk about how we increase upon this earth from the physical place, but also being able to tap into the fullness of the earth. Psalm 24 verse 1 part A says that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So I have capacity to possess my portion in this physical reality of life, but also the treasures that are in the earth. And we titled that someone series, Give Me Rest by Giving Me this land and that message we've received amazing feedback which has been a blessing to the body of Christ the next area where we are advancing is being able to take resources being able to take over systems in terms of releasing the, the power and the will of God into every place that God is sending us into and then next so that is the assignment for today and then next Sunday will be a very critical time because we are going to talk about the third place where we are advancing, having capacity to rise above every demonic force. So it will be a teaching on how to enter into higher levels of spiritual warfare, especially in these wicked times. So if you are not here, you can always log into our YouTube um, platform so that you see where God is taking us in this season. Our assignment today is to have a quick discussion on how we take over resources and how we take over systems. So if you're taking notes, um, the title is Taking Over Resources and Taking Over Systems. Psalm 24 verse 2. Psalm, can you please help me with this screen? Psalm 24 verse Psalm 24 verse 1. Psalm 24 verse 1. earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Can we read together that verse in unison 3, 2, 1? The earth is the Lord's. Okay. Talk, talk, to your, talk to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you're sitting next to me, you must read scripture. Okay. Now let's read together. 3, 2, 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it. Now, that verse, look at it carefully. It is divided into two pieces. There is a first portion where the understanding is to take charge, to take dominion over the earth. The earth there is a physical, the physical ground that we are stepping on. But that ground, ground has treasures hidden in it. That is what you call the fullness. New King James talks about the fullness, the treasures. And then the, third, the second part is where we see the world. The world there is a representation of how people have divided themselves into different systems of doing life. That is where now we find the cultures of life. And every one of us is coming from a specific way by which we have been cultured to understand life. In terms of what we eat, in terms of how we dress, in terms of how we deal with matters of life, um, how you deal with conflict, is a measure of culture. It is why you are introduced in your early tender age. How you saw how how you saw people navigating the issues of relationships and money and and your view of marriage, your view of relationship is really centered on the kind of world. So the assignment of Elohim was to create the world, to create the earth and to put treasures in it, but from the platform called earth which is a creation from God himself and the treasures that are in the earth. It is from those two platforms that now people can now be able to define what life is. So the world is a definition of mankind. So God put human beings into the earth and from the earth they have determined the world. Please listen carefully. God made the earth, the heavens and the earth. And then we see the cycle of creation. And then God comes to Adam and says, have dominion. In other words, create systems, structures, cultural orientations that will help you to, th to thrive and to live through this system that I have created for you. So the world and now those who live in it. How do we take over 
systems and structures where you are seated can can we can we pray for one minute can you just put your hand on your head and can we pray for a minute <laughs> because we are dealing with very heavy matters today can can you just tell the lord lord help me to see help me to see business people this is for you today especially please if you are in the marketplace there is a message for you today there is grace as you are praying we will have Joshua 6 on the screens just talk to the Lord hallelujah thank you father someone is rising today after taking over the land we now take over systems capacity for resources from this service the lord is going to equip someone who needs that capacity of resources we saw it in prayer when we prayed for this service and the lord is visiting you today and your family in jesus name amen now watch joshua chapter 6 okay now the gates of jericho were securely barred let's go to new king james new king james version New King James Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel none went out and none came in Now question <laughs> Go back to verse 1 How is it that people are still surviving even though nothing is coming in and nothing is coming out Can you imagine that kind of a city? How is life sustained? You see, the the sustenance of a city is that the gates must remain open. If you want to collapse the life of a city is to shut down the gates. Both spiritually speaking and physically speaking. Now, the city of Nairobi has four gates. We have the north gate the south gate the east and the west and when you even study the how um the security personnel are released or commissioned to take over this city they are always placed in terms of the gate for formations so all the army barracks that we have in this city are positioned at every part of the gate because that is how you also secure the land but you need to allow the gates to remain open so that the possibility of the resources and the flow can be able to enter into the city to give life but this is a very peculiar city because it says that nothing went out none came in and the people still survived that's a mystery <laughs> you see even your body physically speaking has gates you have seven gates of your body You just need to go stand in front of a mirror today and see the seven gates. Let me give you a few. The gate of your eyes, the gate of your ears, the gate of your mind, the gate of the umbilical cord amongst others. Every possibility that is released upon the physical body is because the gates have found access. So it is a system of exit and entrance. Can you imagine if you didn't eat the gate of your mouth must allow food to come in so that your body can be nourished so it is it is a mystery that that a city is still standing and the bible says that they fortified themselves with high walls so much so that there was such a big civilization in jericho but no one went out nothing came in but the city was still standing <laughs> so what kind of a city is this the gates are locked but survival is still in view when we begin to study the idea of spiritual cities the first city or the first civilization that we meet in scripture is egypt now this is a quick crash course the first city that the nation of israel interact with is the city of egypt the system of egypt is a system of slavery the idea is for pharaoh 
to keep people perpetually in a place of slavery so that they don't become, so that they don't unleash every aspect that God had planted in their lives. But when you leave Egypt, you will now face the next city, which is the city of Jericho. The assignment of Jericho is to stop you from entering into the promised land. So it is possible for you to leave Egypt, but leaving Egypt is not the complete sequence of, of freedom. You must, you must now understand how to navigate through the intelligence system of Jericho because this, this city of Jericho is, is not like Egypt. So it takes another level of intelligence to be able how to survive through the city of Jericho. It's another spiritual city, a civilization that, that stands between you. So, so the place where God is sending you, there will always be a gate. So when, when Peter is in prison, the Bible says that he went from one gate to the other. And then he stood before the iron gate. This iron gate is the one that opens to the city. So there is, a, there is a barrier between, oh, the assignment of Jericho is to stand as a barrier between you and the promised place. So it is amazing that we left Egypt. <laughs> Pharaoh was drowned in River Nile. He came through charging with his troops. And the Bible says the Egyptians you see today, you shall see them no more. So after we leave Egypt, we will now deal with the intelligence of Jericho. Now listen carefully. When you leave the slavery of Egypt, you will now contend with the intelligence of Jericho. Jericho is mounted. The reason why Jericho can stand is because it's a fortified city with high spiritual intelligence. We will see how to take over this city. And then the third city or the third civilization that they face is called Babylon. <laughs> now, Babylon waits until you get into your promised land to take you out. Babylon does not come when, when you are advancing towards your promised land. It waits. So King um, um, Nebuchadnezzar comes in a sequence of being... Can you, can, you see, can you see what Babylon does? It comes to the place of the promise, takes you out and begins to conjure you to fit another kind of life. This is what happens to Med Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel. So Babylon waits until you get your job. You came to the altar of prayer and the Lord secured you to a place of productivity. Most Christians, when they receive their blessing, they have not received higher understanding to know that there is also a way by which you not only find access, but you also need to learn the way of preservation. How you enter into Jericho is by knowing how to access by how you survive Babylon is knowing how to preserve the kind of blessing that God has given you. So after you walk down the aisle and God blesses you with, your, with a spouse, then we must, learn, we must learn that it is Babylon that will come to take you out of holy matrimony. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. So it waits until you get the place of the promise. Babylon watches you when you're when you're praying on the altar. Oh Father, when you secure, when you secure this relationship, when you say, when you give me this child, ah, can you see? Can you see that when the angel came to Mary and said, "You will be with child. She, he, th this baby will be called Messiah, the Anointed One." From the decree of the angel, then the system of Babylon comes. Herod releases a decree that every child, every male child, should be cut off. How, how, how is a decree coming at a place where I have now been fruitful in the womb? Because the assignment of Herod is to ensure that Jesus does not get to the place of destiny. Now, this already is a prayer answered for someone because you've been wondering, how comes when I entered into manifestation, I began to face higher levels of battles? Now, the Lord is introducing to you to Babylon. <laughs> you, you conquered Jericho. Now, now Babylon is in view. Babylon waits when your loved one who you could not talk to finds access to your life. The previous year, the family was broken. But now, oh, there's so much grace in my family. Babylon is waiting. We must also learn how to preserve the blessing 
that God has released upon our lives. And that is why it is dangerous for your prayer for your prayer life to end at the place of the blessing. Your prayer life must continue even after manifestation because every prayer you pray after manifestation is for God to preserve. You are no longer praying for, for you to receive. You have already received. So my continued altar of prayer is to preserve that which God has brought into my life. Now, these are the three spiritual cities. We see them in our time. Babylon can come in form of music and tailor made in form of series and movies. So, you come to, to a church service and the intelligence of the kingdom is planted in your mind. For instance, about what sexuality is all about. You go to scripture and you realize that the dimensions is male and female. Male and female, he made them. So, the people who should relate is male and female. Okay, he made them to be male and female. You receive that intelligence from scripture. Babylon comes to, to take you out of the knowledge you received. He says, you can now wake up. You say, I, I was watching a video where now people are now moving from seeing, them, seeing themselves as human beings. There's a lady who was saying that she's going to go to court in the U.S. because she's no longer now feeling as a human being. She wants to be a dog. And she's going to get services for pets. Male and female, he created them. But Babylon came and said, ah, the idea of the orientation of sexuality is based on how you feel that day. It's called Babylon. It can come in different forms. <laughs> Have you seen someone who was walking with the Lord saying, Lord, I will never leave you. Oh, I will never walk away from you. With tears in their eyes. They lifted their hands in the sanctuary. But at the junction of life, you now realize <laughs> that Babylon is in view. That's the assignment of the enemy. So Egypt, Jericho, Babylon. So what are the four ways by which we can take over these systems? Whether it is the barriers that stand against us or whether it is the systems that come to take us out of our place of manifestation. We see this from Joshua chapter 6. Let me read Joshua chapter 6. Then I'll share with you these four keys and then we will pray. Are you receiving something from the Lord today? Say amen. Joshua 6. Verse 7. Oh, the screen has reduced size. Thank you, sir. Joshua 6, verse 1. And let's read from verse 1 so that we see the progression. Now, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went, in, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do for six days. We are reading to verse 7. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times and the priest shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn and when you hear the sound of the trumpet that all the people shall shout with a great shout then the wall of the city will fall down flat and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. Last verse on that text. And he said to the people, proceed and march around the city and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. Now look at Joshua 2 verse 1 to 3. Because this is where we find the first way by which we begin to take systems. The first way, what is the first 
thing that we need to do to be able to understand how we take over these structures, these deviations in our time. Number one, please write it down. We begin with what we call territorial mapping. Please write it down. Now, this is solid food. If you're here for the first time, we welcome you to solid food. In this church, we left the realm of milk two years ago. So, eat now. Solid food. Number one, territorial mapping. You just write it down. The Lord will help you understand. Territorial mapping. Now, look at verse, uh, Joshua 2 verse 1. So Joshua the son of Nun sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, go view the land, especially Jericho. So they went out and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab and lodged there. Now watch that verse with the eyes of your heart, please. Verse 1. It says, go view the land especially Jericho the first place where we begin the victory of our systems and taking over resources that are needful for our lives is number one we do territorial mapping it is what Joshua commissioned these people to go and view the land and we were teaching this in our large sessions and we are saying that the first place where you understand the place of victory is first of all understanding the one who is coming against you. Understanding the enemy first is a step further to the place of victory. Territorial mapping. Now, there are two ways by which you do this kind of mapping. Now, when I talk about mapping, it can also be for your family. It can also be for your own life. And it can also be for the kind of business that God is calling you to start. We start by viewing the land. Now, what are the two ways by which we enter into this mapping? There is number one, spiritual mapping. And then number two, physical mapping. It is in spiritual mapping where we begin to understand the kind of demonic powers that have been sent to take charge of the place where we are able to conquer. Now, what was the demonic forces that were operating in the city of Jericho? We see that in chapter 2. The system, one of the systems that, that the spies needed to understand is a system called prostitution. Because prostitution is not, is, not a, is not just people behaving in a certain way. Prostitution is a principality that conjures people to, to distort how they relate. So it is the actors who act out the higher power. So for them to be able to understand what Jericho is all about, they are able... So it is amazing that the house that they landed... You know, I actually thought that the first place they would land in Jericho is, is, a, is a pastor's house. Because when you're going to spy, you will, you will begin with a place where you find a safe landing. But the first system that they interacted with was a system that was captured in Rahab's life, which is a system of prostitution. It's one of the principalities that were, were visible in the city of Jericho. Now watch this. When the spies entered into the house of Rahab, the word came to the king that there are spies who have come. Now question, what is the connectedness between the house of Rahab and the palace of the king? Because if you go to a house, for instance, if you come to this, you, you move from another state, you come to Kenya, you come to my house, how... how how many houses have you left so much so that the king or the president will know in precision that you're in my house? It is the interconnectedness of systems that the king could still be seated and know that there are spies. Now, that kind of a view is no longer physical. Now, that is spiritual wavelength. That, that they, had, they had people who could be able to conjure things in the spirit and they could be able to gauge. Now, even parts of witchcraft and all the, these demonic forces are built of this knowledge. That especially uh, some of these people in the villages who are rainmakers, they just sit in a shrine somewhere and they begin to conjure some, some witchcraft and all of a sudden rain begins to pour down. 
is because these are spiritual doctors. They have been able to manipulate the spiritual realm to be able to, to bring realities, physical realities in the physical earth. So the reason why they need to go into Jericho is first of all to understand the land that we are taking in. Now, we are talking about these mountains of influence and it is amazing that we are taking charge. Ah, I'm going to the mountain of media. I'm going to the mountain of education. I'm going to the mountain of politics and governance. I'm going to the mountains of arts and entertainment. I'm going to the mountain of family. Ah, Pastor Maxi, my ministry is onto family. Ah, my marriage is a platform for ministry. Congratulations. You have come a long way. I celebrate you. Ah, we are actually your cloud of witnesses. From the inspiration of your destiny, the next step is to understand the powers that are in that mountain. Some of us went into places where we did not take time for God to show us the, the powers that are mounted in that area. So you can send a flyer and say, I am going to the mountains of politics. Congratulations, we celebrate you. We will be there with you in hard and thick. But do you know the principality that sits in the mountain of governance? How, do you know the intelligence on how to navigate the system called corruption? Because corruption is not a person, it's a system. I'm trusting God to build my family from the ground up. I am a savior who is rising. Now there must be knowledge on the kind of forces. Now, this is going to be important intelligence for someone in this half of the year because as I was praying for this message, the Lord was saying that it will be, people will be summoned into the place of intelligence of the Spirit and the Lord will begin to unveil and, and reveal the kind of forces that come, especially part of their spiritual heritages. You will go to pray and the Lord will begin to show you um, uh, 20 years ago, you were not there, but 50 years ago, there's something that happened to your grandfather. And my son, because you are the savior that I'm raising in this family, I am going to give you a specific way of consecration to be able to deviate away from that which took away your ancestors. It's called territorial mapping that comes from the intelligence of the spirit. So, can you imagine a bride <laughs> who is walking down the aisle to manifest the ministry of family because that's where God is assigning her. And as she's walking down this aisle with the manifestation of this miracle, in her mind, she understands the kind of battles that she will be facing. So you, for us, it is us who are seeing her walking down the aisle. But in her mind, she has also stayed with the Lord enough to know that ah, there is a way that people in my family are deviated from this kind of life. So as I go to, to, to release my vows in this place, I, I am also being backed up with the knowledge that will help me to sustain this altar of my marriage. Those are the kind of people. So there are people who just gist around, throw flowers and just... <laughs> It's called territorial mapping. Go spy the land. Do you know what it means to raise a business in this city? And you see all these other people putting some concussions on their doorsteps. And sometimes we are invited as pastors to go dedicate these, these shops. Some of them are not even Christians. And when you walk through the doors, they tell you, Ah, uh, you see this image of a small elephant? This is a god of fertility. Now, every time I place this idol here, they, they, are even, they will even tell you it's an idol because they know that they got that piece from India. And then they plant it. Now, what is a Christian really doing? The, now, in that same street, you will see a believer, mountain, a shop, and you realize that customers are not coming to my shop. But my, my friend here, people are flowing. They even have to call them and say that, um, you know, they even call, he, call him, he's not even in the shop and say, we, we need your service. So these people were able to conjure powers. I was looking at the documentary, this guy is a billionaire and he was asked, how have you been able to get to this place? He said that once in a while in the year, I, I will always go to this island. He mentioned it in a specific country. And I will quiet my soul 
and from my yoga practices i feel like my soul is ascending i now tap some kind of wisdom that will help me now to introduce products and services and the believer is watching series please don't feel bad god is helping us pastor maxi i'm starting a restaurant <laughs> come dedicate it we, we will show up but let your business startup be backed up with this intelligence look at how even your prayer altar will have a level of maturity when you close your shop in the night and you go back to your room you now begin to pray i am advancing against powers of darkness lord i will not go to sh- to a shrine or to an altar somewhere in a mountain to be able to arise i, I will not give my body to my boss i will not corrupt my body in fornication so that i can be promoted in this office i am surmounting myself above these challenges now the next morning you will show up with makeup <laughs> but they don't know what you did in the secret place your colleagues will talk about you in the corridors of your office but they will be watching you with wonder how is this person able to rise so even for ministry when we started this rebuilding work the lord told us first of all understand the principalities that work in the city what is the force that has kept people from listening to the messages even in the westlands what are the powers that you you don't just show up the sons of skiva they paul in the name of jesus that that paul preached come out now they will tell you paul we know jesus we know who are you so going to view the land was not sightseeing it was to accumulate knowledge and when they came back they said our first interaction was with rehab now rehab was redeemed because that is what happens when we show up in a land we don't just redeem the system but we also redeem the people who are actors in that system that's true redemption when a system is redeemed and the people who acted as actors are also redeemed that is now taking over systems and resources perpetually so you do spiritual mapping you do physical mapping sit down sit down have half times where you can sit with the holy spirit and say father what what are the enemies that fight our family what is it that my grandparents were fighting against that you want me to rise above don't watch netflix for 6 hours and then casually move through life lord i am ready show me show me show me the pathway for my for my for my victory in my life the kind of things that some of us will be doing are we are going to territories where other family members could not get there so we are advancing in new areas new territories that have never been seen before we will need to understand what god wants us to know now you will sit down with the holy spirit sometimes and he will begin to show you deep things about your family he will say now watch this trend this trend of poverty that started as a mindset that was now entrenched in terms of how people live look at how poverty was connected to alcoholism now my son you are a savior that has come up to mount zion you will judge the mountains of iso what are the mountains that you are judging is because i know the enemies that are against me now when i pray when i wage war and next week we will talk about how to wage war spiritually you 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 will be at a better place than someone who is just walking through the land so it is You see when you say I'm going to the promised land the promised land is also a sense of responsibility because we have Christians saying oh I am possessing I receive the promised land receive and then the preacher is sweating on the on the pulpit I I I take it I even remove my coat and I begin to slap all of you you will take it by force now come down <laughs> Kenan is a responsibility before i take jericho go view the land do you know what is your enemy between now and age 40 do you know at every decade switch of decade is a gate of time go and study what happened to jesus at age 12 go and study what happened to jesus at age 30 
If you are not yet 30, yet, 30 is a gate. Joseph, there is something that happened to Joseph at age 30. There is something that happened to Jesus at age 30. There is, there is a certain gate that you get to at age 40. 40 is a full cycle of a full generation and a full season of life. So, as you approach your 40th birthday or your 30th birthday, do you know the enemy that fights against 30 or 40? It's called spiritual intelligence. Territorial mapping. Both for my family and for my life. Preacher man, all the people who are going into ministry, listen twice. You don't just pick a mic and begin to sing. You don't just put a flyer and a poster and say, I am anointed. <laughs> you know, I saw a young man calling himself Apostle Doctor. And by the way, he's just six months. He's just, just been in this he has six protocol. I think one for tea, one for Bible. <laughs> the prayer you can pray for that person who has no understanding is a prayer of mercy. Preserve this one. Lord, when you bless me with a baby, go and study Mary and see what happens when you are carrying the fruitfulness of the womb. Before your next child comes, Lord, I'm trusting you for another baby. And I know that there is a commission that is... Now, that could be the prophet anointed to wipe your tears. So, Hannah, you prayed and Samuel was revealed. What is it that will preserve Samuel to stay on the altar perpetually? So, Hannah made a covenant with the Lord and said, I will always, I will always make my way to Shiloh because my, my supplication in Shiloh is that which preserved Samuel. Now, you will see Samuel manifesting his prophetic action but make no mistake is because Hannah is praying so Hannah watched and saw oh, I have struggled to have the fruit of the womb so the only way for for me to survive and to get into this place of manifestation is my covenant of Shiloh please don't take for granted this first point of victory we are talking about taking systems, spiritual mapping, both physical and spiritual. C can you pray for one minute as you're seated and tell the Lord, Lord, show me, show me what are the battles and the enemies of my life. That what took out my great, great grandmother will not take me out. Please make that prayer from your heart. If, if you if you don't want to pray, it's okay. We can wait for the end. But from your heart, Lord, show me. When I go to pray, in some of you, you will see this. You will see these enemies. God will give you that wisdom when you go to sleep. Some of you, the Lord is going to anoint your dreams tonight. That, that he will show you images of the things that you stand against. And when you wake up, you know, ah, this is the enemy of my destiny. You will now wage war with power. Ali Kaso Telekata. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's called territorial mapping. Can you talk to the Lord? Show me, Father. Go view the land. And they came to the house of a harlot named Rehab and lodged there. I now know what I am up against. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. The second thing that we do after we have mapped our lives and our families is what happens to the commission that Jesus gives to the disciples. Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 26, 41. Matthew 26, 41. This is what the Bible says. Controller. May the Lord anoint your fingers. Do you have that verse? Okay. I think it's not on this screen. Watch and pray. Now, the first part of watch is mapping. Watching is not opening your eyes while you're praying. <laughs> Watching is mapping. You know, some people show up in a prayer meeting you say close your eyes, they're saying, no, Pastor Maxi, I'm watching. This is how I watch. 
It's, more, it, it's not a physical idea. And pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, after mapping, we now get to the second equation, which is what we call prophetic intercession. Please write it down. Not just intercession, but prophetic intercession. Prophetic intercession is built from the knowledge you, you gathered from your mapping. Now, write down that definition on your notebook or your phone. What is prophetic intercession? It's not just another kind of intercession. Prophetic intercession is praying with the inspiration of the knowledge I have received from the mapping that I did. So if I discover that the altars that fight my life or my family is poverty, I now begin to search for the accumulation of scriptures and sovereign ideas from God's word that will help me to rise against the disadvantage that I have been able to discern. And now that is what you call prophetic intercession. It is also what you call prophetic worship. And you realize that sometimes God will begin to inspire some songs in your heart. Have you ever realized that sometimes you'll be singing a song for three months till your friends tell you, ah, you need to look for another song. That song is a ladder in the spirit. The Lord is wooing you to take you deeper to a place where you're now praying with higher levels of grace. Because it is from the, the Holy Spirit searches that which you need and he begins to inspire you to pray in regards to what he has shown you. So when you look at your family, you can now go to the altar of prayer. Now, prophetic intercession is one of the dimensions of prayer. Now, we've taught you on prayer. And by the way, first service for this month, uh, those of us who come for second service, you need to go online and watch the sermon series for, uh, or rather the view of the first service because we are discussing the prayer that produces results. So you need to go back and pay the price to watch. Prophetic intercession is one of the ways by which we pray. Now, this prophetic intercession is mounted upon the inspiration of the facts and the information that I have gathered about my life. So, you can study your family and realize that after seven, after a cycle of seven years, it's like people go down. It's like after three years, especially before December, it's like someone had to, to be taken away. It's like accidents happen at a strategic time in my family. Now, that is what you, the Lord showed you from your mapping. Now, you bring that knowledge to the place of prayer. Combining that with the inspiration of God's word, you now seek for scriptures because scriptures are gates that will open you up to the life to be able to, to come against that which you saw. So, for instance, if you're dealing with altars of early death, you now go to the inspiration of scripture and see what has the Lord said about life. I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. The thief comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. But I have come that you may have life and have it in abundance. That is a scripture combined with the knowledge that I mapped in my time of prayer that helps you to rise. So now that is what you call watch and pray. It's called prophetic intercession. The third thing that we do now, territorial mapping, prophetic intercession. Now on the third place, we now begin to engage the strategies of victory. Please write it down. Third step, engage the strategies of victory. For the strategy that was given to Joshua was to move around the city seven times. And then on the seventh day to move around seven, seven times on the seventh day. It was a strategy of victory and in obedience, in obedience to the strategy that God gave Joshua, then the walls came down. Now, I want you really to watch this progression very carefully because this is how we are going to attain this takeover of systems and all this chaos that we are going through. I start by having the knowledge of what I am up against. I bring the tool of prophetic intercession combined with the word of God to be able to find a way out in what I have discovered. And then from the platform of prophetic intercession, God begins now to give you strategies on how to overcome the pains that you have seen in your life. 
so when we started this ministry this rebuilding season one of the strategies that god gave us is that you are your season in this time you must you must ride from the strength of the parents so we now went to our mothers and our fathers and we told them in this season we have discerned that one of the strategies that god is giving us is that as the young people are praying we must also have the support of the mother and the father there is something that god will release through the platform of parenthood that god will use to be able to enter so the parents therefore now became a gate to be able to supply grace when they pray now the lord can inspire that kind of an idea and you rub it off <laughs> you say our parents have their own sanctuary <laughs> your days in the wilderness will be long and we had to humble ourselves and say our parents we need you to help us in this battle because it was a strategy for victory the lord now came and said the altar of prayer should never die in this ministry so much so that most of us who are intercessors here you have even been persecuted because they are telling you that you're praying too much the lord is saying to you today rejoice 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 in that persecution is because the enemy now wants to derail your focus like yesterday morning we had the prayer movement early morning 6 to 11 and there was so much grace yesterday we prayed and we felt the heavens have opened and after that prayer meeting someone can come to you and say you you are praying too much they don't know that that is a strategy of victory the reason why you have not been to hospital since january is because of that altar of survival it's called the strategy of victory one of the prayers that i will pray for you today <laughs> and beside you lord no other god but you <laughs> let me stop there he lay before your throne and on beside you lord no other god but you alive we fall your throne and beside you lord and beside you lord no other god but you we lay our lives before your throne am i the one that god has anointed to introduce another system in my family Am I the gatekeeper that will introduce new levels of life in our country? The Lord is seeking for the one who will take over Jericho. Now when you look at Jericho it looks a fortified city. It looks big, it looks heavy. So much so that they even tell you you don't have access through the gates. The gates have been shut. The first interaction is Rahab who is not keen to the things of God. there will be deviations that you will encounter in the journey of taking over but the lord is still giving us a strategy on how to rise against these systems and beside you lord no other god but you we live our lives before you so when you start your school in 20 years it's still standing ah they will celebrate you but you know that you have combined all these forces territorial mapping prophetic intercession strategies of victory they will not see that because that is your posture in the secret place but the reason why that school is still standing is because you have engaged the formation of battle so joshua you need to advance <laughs> there is more land for you to take young lady You've been called to the ministry of family but don't go there in a casual way. Young man, when you start that photography business, you will begin to interact with the forces of the demonic. But the Lord gives you strategy. In that students, listen twice. As you go to this mission trip, you will interact with heavy matters because you're in a new land. But the Lord gives you a strategy. For some of you the Lord will tell you that between now and the time you come back is a time of consecration it is not that you just went to a mission field 
the Lord is using those three weeks to fortify your spirit because when you go to the campus that you're going to, you will meet demonic atmospheres. People who, who, who club from Wednesday to Sunday. So God takes you to Trukana to release that atmosphere in your spirit. So when you now come to your campus life, you will graduate. You will graduate. It's a strategy for victory. So while others are taking photos in, in, on hills and saying we've come, slaying in Trukana. For you it is not slaying. Didn't come here to slay. I can slay in Gong Hills. I don't need to go to a hill in Trukana. It's a long way. I took 800 kilometers to travel. It's because I'm seeking for something. Ah. Consecration by the three weeks becomes a strategy. Now, you'll just see it as a mission trip for three weeks, but when you come back, you realize, ah, my prayer altar has grown. You see, some, some forces, that depressing spirit that was attacking me, when I came back and I slept on the same bed, ah, I have now discovered that I am enjoying good sleep. It's called the strategy of victory. Young lady, before you date someone else, stay with the Holy Ghost. You dated someone, you broke up, another one you broke up, is because it's more than breaking up. It is because the Lord knows that the, the matrimony that will come out of your life should sustain generations for years to come. So don't show up casually in dates. You have gone beyond dating and eating ice cream. When your heart is broken, it no longer seeks for ice cream. It seeks for a strategy of victory. You can buy yourself ice cream after the service. So I don't need anyone... <laughs> It's called the strategy of victory. I speak to you prophetically today that anyone who is willing to combine these forces, <laughs> consistent time of understanding my map, look at how they are going around this, the walls of Jericho. It's part of mapping. <laughs> going around. Nothing is falling, but I'm going around. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Sometimes you need to put your business idea on the floor of your room, your secret place, your business plan, and begin to walk around it. Father, I'm going to prosper. From this business, great profit will come out of it. It is this profit that will be redemptive even in the house of God. Some of you, the reason why you're going to go to some areas of land, I'm seeing someone who God will, will take you to to, to a land this week that you'll receive a phone call and, and someone will invite you to check out a piece of land when you get there <laughs> you don't have millions in your pocket but, but I'm, seeing, I'm seeing the kind of an institution that we will build here, these are 10 acres so I, I will give a tithe to the church, there is a church that will be planted here but the rest of the acres are for me to build this hospital now this hospital is because I'm also an apostle in the healing ministry where the pastor lays hands my work is to use the intelligence of medicine, both of us are healing apostles it's called mapping prophetic intercession, some of you have not started to pray, you are waiting when you hit your 50th birthday <laughs> do you know how many forces you will fight between now and your 50th birthday you have reduced your life to designer clothes and a chain around your neck that's how you define your life when we say it is time to pray you are not willing to leave your garments and put away your titles so that we pray because priests have come and from that place you receive strategy Today the altar call is to go back to the system of victory. And anyone who is willing to enter into that sequence, God will go with you. So today, by the grace of God, we present to you taking over systems and resources. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> I'm going to do the altar call. We'll be winding up in five minutes. Please minimize movement because we also want to pray for this team. If you don't need to move, just sit quietly on your seat. Just meditate on these scriptures today. So as the rest of us are praying, I want to invite everyone who is going to Trukana.
you need to come quickly together with the leaders so that we pray for you the rest of us can you just be praying wherever you are hallelujah i love you lord for your mercies never fail me all my days held you The moment that I wake up till I lay in my head I will see of the goodness of God I love you Lord for your mercies never fail me all my been held in your hands from the moment that I wake from up. The moment that I wake up. Ay, 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 ay. Until I lay my head, mm. I, I will sing of the goodness of God. Now we saw the hand of God when we went for this camp. The hand of God was upon us. Some of you were baptized with with grace that you will never recover. Now the Lord has seen it fit for us to go to the next level of your spiritual growth. It's more than traveling. If you needed to travel, we would have designed another trip. Trukana is too far to just take a trip. And I hear the Lord saying to all of you that as much as God will use you to minister to those people it will also be a significant time for you and your life. Because God is going to introduce himself to you and he's also going to introduce you to yourself. You're leaving Nairobi but you're not going to come back the same way. So this is a very definitive time for all of us. It comes at a very significant time because some of you this will be a trip that you had a chance to go for a long time. Some of you will be leaving this country in the fullness of time. So take advantage of this time because it's something that God will drop into your heart. And so the same words that God told Joshua we release those words to you as well be strong and be very courageous the lord shall be with you and he shall go with you the commission is to advance to advance the kingdom of god and for us also to advance in our lives can you make a prayer wherever you are standing can you make a prayer father father as i live today use me but also touch my life pray that prayer parents if your son or daughter is here it's a good time to join them in prayer release that blessing that parental blessing hala kason telekata make that prayer make that prayer salu kariya sa church can we all pray for these loved ones we are about 80 of us we will be leaving this city for the next 3 weeks that god will sustain us can you make a prayer wherever you are can you make a prayer thank you father Alina na na neno se na na ni akabala ele ya mana ke sela oh ya sai be strong and be very courageous thank you father i sense that there is grace being released upon you some of you you will feel it the grace of god the grace of god you will stand we declare from the journey from this city to trukana county that the lord goes before us the angels have been released and the lord will keep us in good health so that we may be a blessing to his people and we declare to the land of trukana all you gates be opened up is the first county that we are visiting this year we declare in the name of jesus from the north south east and the west be opened up that the king of glory may come in father We declare that we shall see manifestation of healing, signs, miracles and wonders. Oh Father, as we go, 
We know that there are systems that contend against that land. But we go with the higher authority of grace. And we know, Father, that from the intelligence of your word, we are rising by grace. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. When I prepared this message today, I prepared it with you in my heart. Because you are going to get into the practical of things. Some hear it, but don't act. For you, you have designed, you have decided that the Lord will use me when I'm young. It takes, it takes courage to leave the comfort of your house. I know some of you have many questions. Lord, how shall it be? It takes courage. You're standing there the same way that Joshua stood. God told Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. But arise, because these people must advance. So for the sake of the young boys that we will meet, for the sake of the young girls, the women and the men who have not seen the light of the kingdom, you have decided to be used by the Lord. So this message really was for you. <laughs> God will give you intelligence on the map of the area. He's going to show you how to wage war in that prophetic intercession. And there will be strategies for victory. From those strategies of victory, we are going to come back with powerful testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, together with our dear parents, we release that grace now. That evangelistic grace that came upon Timothy. Do the work of an evangelist and see to it that you have completed your ministry. We release that grace upon you today. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So advance. We are taking charge. Taking charge. Hallelujah. Now let me request the church to be praying for us as we take this journey. Um, they leave today, early morning tomorrow, on their way to Trukana. Um, we have about 80 of us going for this mission trip for three weeks. We'll be doing crusades, school missions, outreaches to the churches. We'll be doing a lot of community work. The only request we ask is for you to pray for us. Do you make that commitment? That when we come back early July, that we will come back flooded with great testimonies of what God has done, even in this season. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And by the way, I must mention that the ladies, you are looking nice. I think this should be the dress code for Sunday. <laughs> I didn't even recognize some of you, but you look nice. Yeah, God will help us. Parents, all our parents who came, could you please stand? All our in our parents, if you're here, we just want to honor you, appreciate you. Come on, guys, can we appreciate these parents? Oh, come on. Can we appreciate these parents? One more time. One more time. Can we appreciate these wonderful for releasing us to do the work of the ministry? Now, parents, um, please be comforted. I know it's hard for your son and daughter to take off for three weeks without a phone. Imagine. But we will still come. We will not stay in Trukana. You know the disciples, when they saw the glory, they told Jesus, can we stay here and build a house here? We promise you, we'll, are, are we going to come back? Or can we make that promise to them that none of you will be left in uh, Manyata somewhere in Trukana? So parents, we celebrate you, we honor you. Thank you so much for praying for us. Uh, by the way, our parents have designed it that every, every day we are out in mission, they will be praying for us every night. They will gather together online to pray for us. So we appreciate you. Let's appreciate this wonderful Father. Come, let's appreciate. You. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And um, um, our chair of the parents committee, uh, Mr. Gitao, has requested that we fellowship with the parents for about 30, 40 minutes after this service. Uh, so you can just remain behind for a moment, just for us to put a few matters in check, but otherwise we are ready to take over the land of Trukana, county of Trukana. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you sure you're ready? Are you sure you're ready? Okay. So, so please go back, otherwise this might end up being a vigil. So everybody please rise up on your feet. 
as we, as we leave the sanctuary today. God bless you. Hallelujah. While you're still standing, can we again appreciate all the serving teams that have served today behind the scenes? Thank you so much. The worship team, can we appreciate the worship team, the band, the, the guy behind the camera, Anonymous. God bless you. Uh, thank you also to Deacon Wambogo, one of our deacons in the ministry. Can we appreciate Deacon Wambogo? God bless you, sir. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Um, hallelujah. This is a good church. And you're good people. And as you go into the week, I pray that this blessing will go with you. So please lift up your hands as we release this blessing. Father, we thank you for the word that we have received. We now pray for grace to enter into the manifestation of it. I pray, Father, that this week you will show us what we need to know about ourselves, our families, our businesses, our areas of commission. Help us to pray with that understanding as prophetic intercessors. And I pray that you will unlock the strategies of victory as you showed Joshua. We are advancing, Lord, through this month, the gate of time, and even into the half of the year. And Father, in the same way that our, our pastors, our fathers in the church will stand to bless your people in the similitude of Aaron and his two sons, while they stood on the congregation of Israel to release this blessing, I stand now from this altar to those on ground and to those online releasing this blessing upon your people. Now may the Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and extend his countenance of favor upon you. I declare that day and night his presence and protection is with you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Can we now share the words of the grace and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Now with your neighbor, tell them surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. You, you, you. All the days of your life. And I prophesy to you that you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever amen. Amen. amen now tell them i love you i okay even if it's by faith i love you <laughs> celebrate you and god bless you amen god bless you shalom